it came to me in a dream after I finally fell asleep late at night. The music sounds so foreign and outlandish to my ears in the dream. After I had finally awoken near noon, the music still lingered vividly in my mind. In moments when it was dead silent, I swear I was able to hear it, faint yet clear enough to recognize that strangely sinister tune. For the rest of that day, it became like an itch, wanting me to scratch it through bringing it into waking reality. To bring it life, I had to make that song with any instrument I could get my hands on. So, rather than going camping out in the woods for a week with a friend of mine, I saved up money to get the instruments for this song. The time it took to have all the needed instruments may seem sharp, but with that gradually unbearable itch increasing, it seemed more like months rather than three weeks. I told my friend, Aria, that I canceled the trip because I was working on a big project. She asked me why the project was more important than us camping out together. I simply told her that I needed to complete this project more than anything. I wanted to say it was vital to my own sanity, but decided to leave that detail out. When the time came, I bought every single instrument that was necessary to create this outlandish music that had been haunting me relentlessly. There, in my soundproof room, I had a synthesizer, a drum set, a guitar with a distortion pedal, a wired microphone, and a few other uncommon and bizarre instruments of metal and strings. My computer was ready to record. It's as if it was waiting to document this cursed song that had been tormenting me. So, I hit record and begin playing the synthesizer. The notes were not beautiful, but anxiety-inducing. My fingers felt like they were being controlled by some unseen force as I pressed the same set of keys to create this malignant rhythm. Once the rhythm was fully formed, I set it to repeat and moved on to the drums. I wasn't on autopilot. I was fully aware, but it was as if my body was having its strings pulled as I sat down at the drums and began beating them violently. The beating of the drums and their cymbals was almost tribal and ritualistic. A ritualistic beat as if to turn the sun black and screaming with terror as it uncontrollably bled black fiery napalm-like ooze onto the earthly inhabitants below. This vicious hella storm of primordial rage possessed me to beat those drums and cymbals. I never felt such hatred before. It was so intense and so otherworldly that it makes me restless and scared whenever I dwell on it. After setting that ritualistic drum beating on repeat, I moved on to the bizarre instruments next. As I achingly pulled a rusty violin bow against the string-shaped metal instruments, Covered with jagged forms of wire nailed in, I felt as if I was trying to force out an overwhelming sense of horrid, anxious fear into these bizarre instruments. It had to be slow and agonizingly ear-piercing and blood-curdling. The sounds it made were like screams of people being torn slowly apart, the screams, though, being stretched just as achingly slow. That was put on repeat, and so then it was time to move on to the guitar. I practically shredded that guitar like I was trying to erase this undying itch in my bones. Even if it meant scratching through my very flesh, this too was in a repeated pattern, violent and utterly abominable. I distorted it with the pedal to make it sound even more demonic than it already was. Once I set that on repeat, I moved on to my final instrument, my vocals. My own vocal cords have been changed after the whole ordeal. You see, I can't speak anymore, but for some reason, I can only scream. 
Of course it's strange, but after all that's happened, it's highly unsettling to me. I let out screeches and howls that I never knew I could create with my own voice. A terror quickly possessed me, a terror I could only describe as outlandish and powerful like in a nightmare. That was what caused me to let out those horrifying sounds into the microphone. What I screamed was some sort of language that doesn't belong to any past or present human culture or civilization. All I could remember after that was looking up at the ceiling as I let out one last scream and saw the most horrid, atrocious face belonging to some nameless abomination. The police showed up to my house from what I was later informed about by the detectives that visited me in the hospital, seemingly everyone in my entire neighborhood had gone violently insane the night I made that nightmarish song. They all tore each other apart. People carved up each other in awful ways and wrote unfamiliar hieroglyphs onto their walls. Their lungs were torn from presumably screaming too much. The officers who went into the houses to investigate were so horrified from what they saw that they had to see therapists to help them cope with the frightening scenes they unfortunately stumbled upon. Those scenes seared into their brains and haunted them even in their dreams. When the police finally came to my door, they assumed that I was dead like the rest, but when they got to my soundproof room, they saw I was huddled on the floor in the corner of the room with the microphone wrapped around my face and arms. I was asleep and covered in cold sweat. Apparently, I stopped the recording and saved the file of the finished song. I wouldn't wake up at all from all the methods that they tried. I was still breathing and, well, alive. I just wouldn't wake up, so they took me to the hospital. When I finally woke up, it had been three days since the discovery of my entire neighborhood's violent demise. After telling me about what happened to my neighborhood that night, the detectives then began asking me about what I was doing and about the song itself. I told them all I knew, that music from this dream I had got stuck in my head and became such an unbearable itch, I knew I had to give it life by making the song in our waking reality. The detectives told me themselves that they tried to listen to the finished recorded song and couldn't get through even the first 35 seconds without becoming overwhelmingly anxious and freaked out. I've never heard anything like that, one of the detectives told me. He had this look on his face like he was remembering a scene from the most ghastly thing he had ever witnessed. Neither of us know how in the hell you made that song, even with the instruments and editing system you had. That recording should not sound like that. They left me after that round of questioning. A couple days later, these men came to my hospital room and told me that they were agents of a secret psychological warfare branch of the government. They told me that they wanted to ask me the same questions, like everyone else before them, but with a new question at the end. These agents then explained to me the awful song I created could be used as some type of psychological weapon against enemies of peace, terrorists, or whoever threatened the country. They wanted me to work for them, to make more songs like that, to be used as a tool of inflicting psychological terror to anyone that they deemed an enemy of peace. Pretty much, it'd be the next Operation Wandering Soul, but definitely more effective and successful. I didn't see myself going back to living a somewhat normal life anymore, so I agreed to help them. I'm going to go with them tomorrow night, just before 10 p.m., and I have a dreadful feeling that tonight I'm going to have another nightmare of new outlandish music that, in all honesty, should never be made, but will soon be.